One place where the idea from the show came from was as a photography curator, I do a lot of portfolio reviews. Um, I go to photography fairs and I look at people's work and something that a lot of photographers have always done and continue to do is represent subcultures. They sort of go somewhere and make um, contacts with people and take pictures of a group and then turn it into a book or an exhibition or something else. Um, this is not dissimilar to what Dorothea Lange and Ansel Adams did in the early 1950s. Um, they both had been to Utah multiple times and had um, family connections to it, but in 1953 traveled to Utah specifically to photograph um, rural Mormon communities in southern Utah. They had gotten, they went to Life and pitched this idea, and Life magazine said, great, go do it, and so the two of them went. Of course, at the time, Dorothea Lange and Angela Adams had already created some of the most important photographs of the early 20th century. Um, Adams with his landscapes and Lange with her um, photographs during the Great Depression. They were looking to branch out, try something new, and this was um, the first time they collaborated. It was also, unfortunately, the last time they collaborated. The photographs are wonderful, and I can talk about them more in a second, but in general, um, this project was in many ways a failure, actually. So Lang and Adam set off. Um, it, uh, it was at a time in Lang's life when she was having a lot of health issues, and so that sort of um, limited her ability to do some of the things she wanted to. They went in the summertime. It was very, very hot where they were going. It was between 105 degrees, 110 on most days. And the equipment didn't work. The cameras broke down. They couldn't get the images they wanted to get. Um, they also got on each other's nerves, as collaborators often do. But they had a more ethical disagreement, too. Um, before they went to these rural towns, they'd gone to Salt Lake City to talk to the Church of Latter-day Saints authorities and make sure they sort of had clearance for this project. Um, Adams wasn't there for that part, for that meeting, just Lang and her family were. Um, and he found out later that she hadn't mentioned that Life was the commissioning body for this project, which he thought was an omission um, that she needed to have told them about. Because at the time, Life magazine was, it's sort of hard to describe how many people in the country would have seen Life magazine. It was the major media source for a huge portion of Americans. Something like a third of the people in the country would see whatever came out in Life. So that was a very public platform for the Mormons not to know that these pictures would be featured in. And then they went and took the pictures and that part went reasonably well. They took over a thousand photographs together um, in three different towns. But more problems started to start, started to happen again in the aftermath of that. So they printed and edited the photographs and Lang ended up arranging about 135 of them on boards to present to life. She and Adams agreed on that, they sort of did it together, and her son actually wrote text that would go along with each of the photographs. They presented them to Life. Life said, great, we love it, we're gonna make this our photo essay. And then that was it, because it was Life, and they got to have their own photo editors and their own magazine editors sort of arrange the whole thing. When the issue came out, Lang and Adams were unhappy to learn that they had um, edited out 100 of the 135 images that Lang and Adams thought were essential to the project and reproduced, reproduced only 35 in the magazine. Um, Adams was especially unhappy because of those 35 images, 28 of them were by Lang and only seven of them were by him. So he felt personally slighted also in that project. Um, and then another layer of disappointment happened when the Mormon communities themselves saw the photographs, they were very unhappy with how they had been portrayed. Um, each of the three major towns that were photographed by Lang and Adams were presented with a certain kind of character or um, understanding. One was given the quote, um, it is an old town and the children have moved away. And of course that town is still around today and they resented the fact that they were being portrayed as sort of a dying town when they infer, in fact weren't. The story of the particular photographs that we have here, which are all by Lang, are actually because we did a project with her in the 1960s about Dorothea Lang and the American Country Woman from which these, project, these photographs from that project were included along with other work she'd done throughout her career. You can see this is the only um, set of photographs in the show where I've included longer text on the labels and, and what's on the labels are the captions that Lang herself wrote when um, she published the photos with us. And you'll see the difference between their sort of descriptive or official title and what she um, emphasizes in her captions. So something that could just be called 
here, Tokerville, Utah, instead focuses on the fact that there's no bank, there's no movie house, no garage, no hotel, no cafe. Um, she really emphasizes in her captioning of these images the sort of pioneer lifestyle of these Mormon women. She talks about people, you know, canning their own food and um, harvesting the land. Um, some of these women were, in fact, themselves the descendants of pioneers who had settled the country only a century before and sort of maintained, in many ways, a self-sufficient lifestyle. This was important in the post-war years, we're talking about 1953 again, because Americans were struggling to define their national identity and the image of the pioneer was one of the main things the country looked to as somehow unique to it. So the fact that Lane was emphasizing that spoke to American national identity at the time um, and also was a way to say these Mormons who used to be on the fringe of society but are becoming more accepted by the 1950s are truly American. They are as American as the pioneer lifestyle.